Welcome to Skeptic's Guide to Tim Vermeer's. This is the second part. It's a little late. Uh, Tim Jameson sent me his equipment, or at least his lenses he used. This is a diagonal you saw in the, sh in, uh, in the movie. This is a mirror you saw, the black mirror. You know the black mirror? And of course over here is the actual reflective piece. Reflective piece. This is a lens he used in a big steel thing. It's a it definitely was manufactured to um, 1670. It's, it's a very flawed mirror. The, I, I checked it out myself. The whole, the, there's a distortion directly in the center of the mirror that, that, that refracts light like a curly cue. It's quite interesting to look at. Um, so it's definitely a mirror that was manufactured to 16 to 1700 per, uh, because if it was a modern mirror, they wouldn't have all these. There's a lot of imperfections there's a lot of color bleed there's a lot of um there's just it's generally a very bad lens for today's standards but for 1672 it would have been approximately uh correct this is the uh shaving mirror and again this is a one times and this is a five times one time and five times I couldn't get it to work with the one times. So, you know, I got many online comments complaining that, you know, well, you know, there's people, you know, they were, they were back in, in Vermeer's day, they, they all had all these ideas about a concave mirror. Well, yeah, they did. This is an eight inch concave mirror and, uh, it's, it's a big concave mirror. But I couldn't get it to work, and if you watch the film, you see all this magnification. I couldn't get to work on the one times, so I had to use a five times. So I had to use a five times concave mirror. Um, you know, I five times concave mirror means it has one concave surface, and then on top of that, there's a plastic part that refracts the light. So then, it, so then it, it, the images appear in it magnify five times so it's actually two it's actually two op optical instruments smashed together but again i couldn't get get it to work with the one times magnifies if i move up the image gets smaller so if i was going to copy this entire christmas tree i would need to have some sort of reference points so i can uh, get the exact uh, magnification so I know I'm looking at the same magnification because there's no way of avoiding that. Because we're using a five times shaving mirror here with a with a with a lens. And remember that the five times shaving mirror here um, collects light. Uh, it's actually the five times shaving mirror is actually doing the heavy lifting as far as opt optical are concerned concern so the lens in front is just providing a focus for the light so I can see right through and get a good very clean image very clean image of what I'm looking at but that's that's because of the the shaving mirror and if I move the shaving mirror then again I kind of if I move it um, this direction, there's no real up and down or um, back and forth, I can get different locations. But I still have to adjust this mirror as well, move it up and down, back and forth to get um, the different areas within the image. However, if I move it in and out, if I move this out, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to completely lose it. So if I, if I come in here, it's like this. And I have to, you know, come back to it. And then I come back to it, and I look into it, and I go, uh oh. So I have to recalibrate it to know exactly what I'm looking at. So it's not, it's not instantaneous. And then I have to figure out, okay, is this the right magnification or not? Is is this the right distance between these two? Because if I widen this, it's gonna it's gonna change the perspective. So what I think. You can do is you have to you would have to take a painting like Vermeer and you would have to sort of sketch out all the, the different lines and get the perspective correctly 
Um, and then if I was going to do the painting, I would then need to, you could actually stencil, you can take the details of the room and you can stencil it on the different parts of the painting and come out with some of the details. Um, but again, that does take someone of, of extreme amount of patience and a fair amount of at least control of your, of your hand to be able to actually um, be able to actually copy the the small details onto the onto the canvas. Um, but again, I'm getting I'm getting what I'm looking at. I'm getting uh, essentially what I'm seeing on there. I mean, I can see as I'm as I'm painting, and I can actually see all the little without knowing so I can actually put some of the details in it. Again, I'm not very good at this high this this type of of drawing. But the but the real difficulty is, I mean, now I've lost it because this is slightly off. I have to adjust it again. And now I'm now I'm painting over here, not over here. And now I have to re I have to recalibrate the whole thing to get exactly where I was where I did leave off. Because unlike a and unlike a still, if I just put a still image, so put a still image and I put it like that, then you get a very, very nice edge. Very nice edge. And it's a lot easier because there's no magnification here. If I go like this, there's no magnification in this mirror. So there's no way of me not getting the pers perspective right. Okay. But in a five time shaving mirror, you're going to get. You're gonna get distortions. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. Um, you're gonna have difficulty with it, actually seeing where you're going. The shaving mirror is doing all the heavy lifting. So um, you know, I decided to. I used a. I used a laser. To see how the. The. Uh, the path and again, it, it it focuses through here, gets kind of focuses down in the, and in all the light just sort of like a big bucket it's kind of squeezes the light here and it just magnifies it and it pops up in in the uh the viewfinder so you can do your little drawings and i was able to do drawings so i was able to reproduce it's like a stencil effect you really do need guides you can't you can't do this without guides because if i move the mirror you know i've, I've lost the image and i have to go back and recalibrate everything to make sure it's i'm on the right I'm on the right part. I can't just simply, it just doesn't magically work. You have to do a lot of ca calibration. And I think it would have been nice to actually watch the movie and see how much calibration he had to do before he even started painting. How, how, do, you, how do you start the painting in, in the little, in, 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 in the uh, little, little, uh, he's taking off a lot of details. Now what I, if you watch it, I think what, what happened was, was uh, he, he basically, Put all the the all the perspective together by by drawing everything out, and then he painted it uh, a painting uh, to to get the general colors, and then he used this as a stenciling device to stencil in the various details in the Vermeer painting. You you can't you couldn't simply it, it, the the film makes it seem like you went through and just basically copied it like paint by numbers. You paint by numbers the entire room and, and just kind of magically appears onto the painting as if it was a direct rep representation of the entire room. But you can't really do that with a, with a, with a lens like this because you would need a, you would need something, uh, you need something to flatten the image. You need something to correct the perspective because the perspective is smashed in a, uh, any kind of magnification, the uh, the the perspective is smashed, and even if I use the one times, I'm still dealing with the flaws within the mirror itself. I'm dealing with uh, the curly cue in the in, in the center of the mirror, which actually bends the light. So if you're looking directly in the lens, at a little itsy bitsy piece of detail on the um, on the let's say the uh, the mirror. Or the or, or the face, it'll actually show a curly cue, a refractive curly cue, because of the fault. Uh, there's a fault in in the lens, so you need the the magnification to 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 t basically 
take a light and, and squeeze it so you see a very high resolution, high detailed version of what you're painting. So anyway, I am now copying the Christmas tree using Tim's method of carefully tracing and coloring in the different areas within the image. Um, it's not particularly easy, but it can be done. It definitely give you, gives you a reference give you a reference of what you need to paint. So this is kind of a form of stenciling. It's a form of stenciling. 